Four Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans, made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Reporting live from under my blanket, I'm Susan Curtis with Duncan at Home. Breaking news, pumpkin spice iced and hot coffees are back. I'll pass it to Mr. Curtis with his blanket for the full story. That is so right, Susan. You know, it's never too early to get in a spicy mood. I'm talking cinnamony goodness that's so tasty, people don't want to leave their blankets either. Back to you. Mmm, no, back to you. (laughs) Ah, all you. The home with Duncan Pumpkin Spice is where you want to be. Of radio. All right. Well, I'm really excited. Uh, thank you for coming in, uh, Mr. Roberts. Uh, it's an mm-hmm, honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, you know, obviously, we're here to to pitch you uh, to to pitch you a movie. Uh, you yeah, know, worthy it. worthy of your talent. What was that? Sorry, I just oh, said sorry. I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, oh, well, if you wouldn't mind, me, I can explain a little bit about the part. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Well, it, uh, I, I mean, it's it, it's it's a Christmas movie. Uh, cool. I'll do it. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it's it's got karate in it. It's a it's a. I will do it. <sighs> you know what? I can't do this. I can't look at you in the eyes. It's not a very good movie, Eric. It's. You, uh, did you see the one where I was a cat? I will do it. I will not refuse work. Nick Cage told me I should. You know, maybe pick and choose, but I'm not. I just I will do it. I, w- w- give me the script, Eric. It's barely a movie. That's fine, you know. As you know, as long as I, uh, as long as I can record the my part on my phone, I'm cool. Ah ha ha! There we go. You can't. No, and you you certainly can't talk into your phone microphone in the bathroom. I'm sorry, that's just out of the question. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Rock. No, no. Hey, no. I think I can handle. Uh, can I do video in my kitchen? <sighs> yes, I'll do it. You drive a hard bargain, Eric Roberts. Here's your sandwich. Thanks. Mm. Mm. Oh. oh, yeah. Mm. Mustard and mayonnaise. Mm. Mm. Oh, there wasn't even a bite taken out of it this time. Oh. My profile must be rising on IMDb. You know when I pick a movie That's when I'm on to press her now The question always comes back to me What will it Welcome, 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 Joy Noel, Feliz Navidad, Happy Hanukkah, Crazy Kwanzaa, all the other seasonal holidays that are celebrated this time to you. Welcome to What Were They Thinking, a podcast about bad to questionable movies, and boy howdy, does this week's have it in spades. Uh, I am, of course, your host, Nathan. Um, and, uh, we are, we are fully festival this week, or with, uh, the Karate Christmas Miracle, and I cannot discuss this on my own. Uh, with me, as always, is the Martin Cove to my Eric Roberts. Brendan, how you doing, pal? I'm doing great, and I'm glad you made it clear to the audience that me being the Martin Cove to your Eric Roberts means it's clear that none of us knows what we're doing here. Right, we're not in the same we're scenes not, together. We're not essential to the plot. None of the shit we say makes any sense whatsoever. We're often shot in uh, soft focus. This really does actually encapsulate. Uh, if we had a video for the uh, for the podcast, they would see that we were shot in that you know that Judge Judy light. Yes, with the with the with the Vaseline on the lens. <laughs> when you said that, I I, I thought I like Judge Judith light. <laughs> no, judge. <laughs> 
man, oh boy, howdy is that was that a missed opportunity? Right. Eh? Anyhow, uh, no, and uh, like I said, today we're talking about the the Karate Christmas Miracle, but uh, we all know we have someone who likes to sneak in at Christmas time. Ho, ho, ho. No, get out of here, Santa Claus. No, get, get the fuck out of here, Kris Kringle. No, we are talking about the lady with the schlong as long as eight tiny reindeer. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Mariah. Hi. Merry Christmas. What's up, everyone? It's Christmas, and the I'm big here. Deer energy. <laughs> <laughs> and she's—it's her new character. She's trying out. Uh, just so it just describes, it just describes what day it is yeah. and where she is <laughs> on that day. It's a Thursday, I think, and it's uh, I'm covered with blankets. We can actually—I want you to say. I mean, we're actually recording on American Thanksgiving today. Yeah, Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Well, yeah. this is not going to air on American Thanksgiving. I know. Can you turn the volume up? I can't hear. But yeah, not not Thanksgiving now. Thanksgiving in the past, and and Merry Christmas to coming up. I think uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Brendan makes me record these things in July, really, and uh, <laughs> I'm sweating my balls off here. Yeah, people. it's actually it's actually April of 2019 when we we're recording this episode. Yep. So um, we were quite prophetic about the whole pandemic thing. Sorry, we couldn't warn you earlier. It's yes. kind of like uh, that. Uh, it's just like Thanksgiving past. You know, like the three ghosts. Thanksgiving present. What past. are you talking about? I don't know. Okay. She's 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 talking about you know a Christmas Carol, but with a Thanksgiving twist. Thank you. So 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 just a Christmas Carol, but it's just called a Thanksgiving Carol. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else has I, changed. No, I mean, but I, I suppose you might you would change the ghosts. I mean. One of them could be like the the ghost of Colonel Sanders. of appetizers past, <laughs> and then the ghost of 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 main course present, mm-hmm. and the ghost of dessert future. The the ghost of post dinner farting now. Man, I would watch that. That's probably like a that would probably be like a good Hallmark movie. <laughs> but you know what isn't a good Hallmark movie? Whatever this shit was. I don't know, man. It's uh, it's maybe it's a little bit above. Uh, a little bit below, rather, a Hallmark movie. That's this what I mean. Mo- this made me fucking hate Christmas. Christmas is canceled wow. this year. I'm just Holy! <laughs> it was, I'd rather watch, uh, what was that one, Surviving Christmas? Save, save, Saving Christmas. Save Saving it for Christmas. the end. Save it for the end. Sorry, sorry. Uh, she's starting out hot here, folks. Uh, we've uh, we've ruined Mariah's Christmas spirit. Well, let's uh, pitter patter. Let's get out of here. By the I just want to say. I just want to say. By the way, this is. I find it hilarious. She told me that Mariah watches a lot of Christmas movies, and she said, "I can't believe this is the first Christmas movie I'm watching this year." Yeah, literally. <laughs> yep. Oh wow. That's why I like. I go back to you know, <laughs> Christmas is canceled. No, but it was I'm, fine. Oh, I've love already it. I've already watched uh, Gremlins and Scrooge, so yeah, uh, I'm good on that end. Gotta see Scrooge this year for the first time. <clears throat> you oh wow well, the oh. um, I yes you should yeah that's a great movie yeah uh but we're not talking about a great movie we're talking about a Karate Christmas Miracle so oh my God get yourself comfy folks do some stretches because now it's time for the plot. Please explain this movie to me. It'll be like, you know, watching it for the first time. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, it's it's fairly simple. Uh, there's a young lad who has, uh, we think, his father's dead, but he's just missing, apparently, because they never found the body. Uh, he is convinced, uh, and that's how you start most Christmas movies, he is convinced yes. that if he completes his 12 days of Christmas list by Christmas, his Christmas wish will be granted, and his father will be returned to him and his mom, who have been living this entire year without him. Um, the mom uh, is kind of, sort of, playing along with their, with her son's ideas and seeking out uh, the help of a law professor who's also a, a former psychic. And Eric Roberts and Martin Cover there. Hilarity ensues. I mean, that's... Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's 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 the framework, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would yeah. say that the mom too is one of those one of those movie moms that they're like, oh, how dare she be a working mom with a job? I'm so busy, busy mom. Yeah. coming this fall to CBS, providing for mm. her family. Good lord, what was she thinking? Right. You know when but. I pick a movie. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so yeah. <laughs> 
dive in, my my. Uh, well, we 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 uh, you know uh, we open uh, with mom, uh, you know, getting dinner ready, and apparently dinner is just salad. <laughs> yes, right. And, 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 and I immediately careful, had Neil that... Breen flashbacks. Yes, thank <laughs> thank you. That that's exactly what I thought too, and like. It just, it looks so, I don't know. It was just really awkward. It had nothing on it too. And there was, it was just literally like just lettuce. And, and, and as she warns her child later, hurry up. Your dinner's going to get cold. And it's, it's because it's fucking, it's already cold because it's salad. But one thing I got to say, this is on uh, Tubi. So uh, thank God for Tubi because we were able to sit through commercials. Yeah, I've never been so happy to get commercial breaks. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's Christmas I, I just, too. I, I watched six... it for free on YouTube. It's there on YouTube. Oh, oh wow. shit! Well, we had, we didn't need a break. We need to sit through six ads like every time. <laughs> it was great. Although I will say this, it has screwed up my YouTube algorithm. Yeah. Because uh, now I'm getting all kinds of suggestions from the same, uh, I guess release. Uh, not production company, but uh, distribution company, mm. oh. and they've got all kinds of whacked out looking Christmas movies. Do they have I think any I Jesus have movies? To... I don't think they're. I don't think they're Jesus movies. Um, I think they're just like because one of them looked like it was like a. I don't know, like a, a naughty elf or something like that. Uh, and there was one where they were basically ripping off Elf. Well, wow. by the looks of it. Well, Nathan, I, I got to tell you, there is a movie called A Wrestling Christmas Miracle. Just want to put that out there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and apparently that's the, the the prequel to this. It's No, it's the same people who made it, but I don't think it's the same characters. And if it is, then I didn't know what I was watching because I've seen yeah. that movie. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same dad doing everything, isn't it's it? Same, yeah, same actors because it's like a family production company. Like, by the way. We you said you mentioned Jesus movie. This like flirts delicately with being a Jesus movie. Yeah, especially movie. when you see like end credits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want to thank our creator. Yeah, well just some of the lines too and I was like, okay, this one like almost wants to be that, but it's like yeah. I had to say cool, something too cool. like this is completely off topic, but of course I'm saying it. So, um it is. So, uh when I I did not knew I didn't know about this movie, even though Brendan like told me about the Lot, like about like, oh over man a year ago. I found I found out about it I think November of 2019 yeah and yeah and I was like oh my god yeah well <laughs> we when Brendan to- was like when Brendan like was like okay we're gonna watch it and like the the poster on Tubi looks like it's an 80s movie and I thought that's what I was getting at, an 80s movie but no <laughs> it was a 2020 movie was it 2020 2019 I believe a 2019 movie and I was like oh so Neil Breeny awesome yeah <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm on board for this I guess all right uh so, so <laughs> mom's trying to get yeah. supper slash salad uh ready and she's like you know where's my kid come on your supper is gonna get cold it's it's again it's salad uh, she goes up to check on him and he's trying to, he's basically, I, at first I thought, so her husband was Bob Backlund because <laughs> the, the kid is trying to memorize the presidents. Oh right. My God. <laughs> yeah. He's a real, he's a real WrestleMania 11, Jonathan Taylor Thomas situation. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> but this is where right away we find out he's trying to get these to-do lists, uh, check the to-do list checked off for his 12 days of Christmas and he says that if he gets these done, dad will come back. And you're like, oh, the dad like walked out on them. And then we're treated to kind of a flash that where we don't know. He was apparently involved in some sort of theater shooting. Christmas. Yeah, this this movie, this movie's premise, this children's Christmas movie's premise is a mass shooting. Uh, America. Theater. That's what sets it <laughs> off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yikes. Ooh. So mom tries to explain him, you know, sweetie, that's, I mean, you're an idiot, but that's not a thing that's going to happen. She doesn't mm-hmm. say it like that, but I mean, this kid's an idiot. Um, yep. <laughs> and then we, we kind of find out that mom is a, a super busy, busy mom, as we said uh, earlier. Uh, she's definitely concerned with her work, and she's... She's in marketing for applesauce, it sounds like. Yeah. She says it's... applesauce more than I cared to hear it. Yeah. What? She said uh, applesauce was the new jello. Jello, yeah. Yeah. 
It's just, and they had jalapeno apple sauce. I'm like, then it's not apple sauce, is it? It's jalapeno sauce. Right. Gross. What? I don't know. What are you putting it on? I mean. Maybe like a salsa. Well, it's just a, a dish of jalapeno sauce. It'd be not that great. No, it's, you know, it's just like, you know, uh, I mean, you you take applesauce, you can put applesauce on like a pork chop. I mean, if you're doing it like a, you know, that way, I mean, you could you could put it on lots of stuff. You could put Listen, it on I'll, a I'll just... I'll just I'll just admit my bias right now. I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a big applesauce person. Well, now so. I'm horny. <laughs> All right. Well, and so what happens next in this movie, Nathan? <laughs> we smash cut to Eric Roberts at the theater. So we think, okay, we're gonna see a theater shooting. Like it's the the whole theater thing. Like I don't get it. And I was like, okay, they're this is. You're gonna, they're gonna explain this, and they never do. No, never. Although the kid does Poorly. go on, the kid does have a lengthy monologue where I think he's trying to explain it, but it makes no fucking sense. Hmm. But yeah, it's just Eric uh, Roberts on a big screen talking about like just bullshit, right? He's basically just spewing his manifesto. Yeah. Yeah. And it does like look he's like gonna- he's in his kitchen. Hmm. Yes, 100%. and, the, and <laughs> we don't. And this is the only time we see. Not, I mean, I don't mean the only time we see him. Like, is this one Smash Cut? But this is the <clears> only <throat> way we see Eric Roberts in this movie. How long do you think he filmed his scenes for? About the same amount of time as he recorded the dialogue for a talking cat. <laughs> do you think he did it in the same afternoon? <laughs> uh, you know what? Wouldn't surprise me in the least. Next on the list. Next on the list. <laughs> he, like, yeah, he's like Krusty the Clown. He just kind of runs in. It, it just reads them all, reads them all, reads them all. Done. Bye. Send me my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, Eric Roberts talks about nothing. Yeah. Um. And then I have a note that says clippings, and I don't know why. Oh, because it has a newspaper, the newspaper clippings? Oh, yes, because mom, mom finds the newspaper clippings that... Uh, yeah, because he had a nightmare about, like, a... Uh, that will not nightmare. Well, that was it. Like that his, was the, yeah. the thing. He had the nightmare about Eric Roberts in the theater and stuff like that. As he do wakes we up all. screaming. And the clown guy and, like, a <laughs> blonde lady. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, because there's, like, there's a guy in a clown mask, and I think that's Eric Roberts, but it's not. No, it, it, I think it is because they say that later. They say that clown's name is James Whitmore, and then that turns out to be Eric Roberts' character's name, which, again, I don't understand. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. So, um, Mom figures, okay, he's found these clippings. This is why he's having the nightmares. I might as well go see a, a psychic that I once met at a fair who's now teaching law at a community college. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And she is just... Okay, her lesson plan, I don't know. Who the fuck would pay to go to college to listen to that? She That's talks all I got to say. She, like, holy she, shit. She gives, them, she gives them like a law-based situation that is like Christmas. But themed. sets it up Christmassy. Yeah, exactly. But, mm. Like, I don't know. Like, listen, I'm not a legal expert, but I have <laughs> a feeling that the solution that ends up coming, that they end up coming up with is probably not the correct one. <laughs> so basically she's setting this up that you go drinking with Santa and his reindeer and a bunch of greasers and surfers start a bar brawl and Santa stops a greaser from hitting you with a whiskey bottle. Should Santa be charged with aggravated assault or simple assault? She said, and this goes, this, this, it's not as quickly as explained as I just explained. No, it, it takes twenty oh, minutes. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's at least three hours conservatively. <laughs> and who offers up the correct answer? But our our young fella who is trying to complete his his twelve days of Christmas, who snuck into her class. How the fuck did he find it? Like, as a, uh, like how did he find that? Like, I don't know. This is crazy. Yeah, Je- yeah. Jesse is the kid's name, and he just he just shows up. Like awkwardly standing there in the in the aisle and and answers and um I okay and she the knew his st- name that's important that's important because the the professor's like you're Jesse ain't you and then mm-hmm. also I just want to mention the brief moment before she starts talking when she says uh let's just say you're all little elves oh no that's not one of them forbidden words is it and I'm like fuck off movie fuck hey, off you know what at least 
that's as far as they went with it. I know, yeah. but but you know what they were hinting at, and it's like, come on. <laughs> I mean, it, it could it, like if Kirk Cameron had been in this movie, it could have been a lot worse. Oh yeah, totally. But <laughs> we might have gotten dubstep Santa Claus. Oh my fair. god. Fair, you know, fair, fair. She doesn't say, "Get the hell out of my class, kid." She she greets him and meets him and knows his name is Jesse, and then we just. We we cut to the mom having a, a conference with Professor Psychic, um, and she's being really cagey about being a former psychic. She's uh, they get in this like protracted conversation about how um, the Professor Psychic gave Jesse's mom a, a, a prediction. Jesse's mom, however, does sort of has it going on. Not as much as Stacy's mom, <laughs> but still, Jesse's mom, talking to psychic professor, uh, says, "Hey, you know, you once gave me a psychic reading um, that my I was gonna be married and I was gonna be in despair because my husband had to go on a long journey." And then the the psychic professor gets all like super defensive about that. Like it's almost like Jesse's mom. Uh, found out that you know she was in witness relocation and, and yeah. exposed her or something i'm not like that anymore i don't do that no i i i, I saw a vision where i was helping kids so she took a, a professorship at a co- community college or university yeah mm. kids kids exactly also um she reveals later why she why she left that business and it, it's just it's it just made me laugh really hard I also got a question. Why is the dad's picture clearly just his acting headshot? Yeah. It's like uh, there's two separate pictures and they're both his acting both. headshot. It just looks like an inspiration package. That's like, you know. Oh, yeah, like a 48 hour film festival. Where they give you like certain things and you have to b- build your movie around it. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly uh, what I was thinking. I was going to say he just got, the, he got a bunch of glam shots done at the Sears Portrait Studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Sears, rest in peace. Can we uh can we put this uh can we put this on our uh company credit card? Uh we have like twenty five dollars to make this movie. Twenty of it went to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Five of it sandwich. went to Martin Cove. <laughs> <laughs> uh so this is when they kind of start speculating that that Jesse's dad didn't die in the in the theater shooting. Well like But he's just disappeared because his body was never found. My thing was, like, do they not know how mass shootings work? <laughs> but, like, uh, I guess, was it really a mass shooting? Well, that's it, it was because there was there was EMTs and first responders and everything like that. But for them to say, like, he was, yeah, he, he was there. But to say, I don't think they would, like, if they didn't find a body, there's no way he's pronounced as dead. Right. Not from ins- the insurance standards, anyways. It gotta yeah. be at least seven. I but was, I mean, because there was nothing found. I was, con- I did, I still to this, to ne- this point, <laughs> not sure what happened in that movie theater. <laughs> I don't know. And you don't get too much time to okay. think about it because next thing you know, uh, there's a birdhouse and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this movie doesn't give you too much time to go. Oh, hey, wait a second. Because then they just introduce something else that's weird and off-putting. And so the, the kid has a, he has a birdhouse. And they're gonna he wants to complete it because it's something he did with his dad. He doesn't want to do it with his mom. Because mom kind of sucks at painting, I guess. She's horrible at painting, by the way. Like I think, yeah, it, I think that child or younger than that child could probably paint better than her. But why do I have the quote written down? Oh, that's why I'm sensing clowns. Yeah, because the uh, uh, Professor Psychic has uh, a dream, and that's why she's like, because she, and so she's seeing the stuff too, and that's why the other, because she sees, I believe she sees the clowns in her nightmares. Okay. Um, and but again, not a whole lot of time to think about that, because we're gonna flash forward uh, to Jesse's uh, quote unquote karate class. <laughs> this is a goddamn jujitsu class. Okay, yeah. my kid took jujitsu. This is a jujitsu class. This movie should be called a jujitsu karate. Uh, sorry, not karate. Jujitsu Christmas Miracle. Yeah, it it should okay. 
it, it looked like a class where people were practicing how to fall, though. Because because that that's a lot of what you do in jujitsu <laughs> is that practice the fall the tumble so that you know how wow. to rebound right but I mean some of this <laughs> looked very bad <laughs> like there is a scene where they cut to the class and it's all it's like adults F- yeah 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 and yeah, yeah. if you notice like when they're putting each other. On the it's like the most delicate like clearly we didn't hire stunt people <laughs> acting I've ever seen. <laughs> mm. Um, most realistic portrayal of a jujitsu class I've ever seen. Though. No, man, I've I've, I've seen better <laughs> portrayals of this. It looked it looked it looked really like still. But that was like a self defense class, like the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing too. That was a self defense class that they were doing. Later, like, yeah, there's later there's a the ladies self defense class. It, it, yeah, yeah. And uh, so okay, so the it's a jujitsu class, and he's getting in his new belt. Okay, cool. But he has this side. I think he's like what a is he a yellow belt or a green belt at I think this he's point? He's yellow. Yeah. In the okay. beginning, yeah. So his goal is to have his black belt by Christmas. Oh, but that must be he must have like a uh, like a few months, maybe a year to, to, to for that. No, Christmas is like next week. Oh shit! Oh, that's doable, right? That's okay. For, he's only actually, facing I one think kid. It's like three days away. I think <laughs> that's true. Mariah makes a good point. He does only have to face one kid over and over again. <laughs> Again, still, I. <laughs> when my oldest was in jujitsu, uh, I think she, I think she got up to her greener yellow belt, and she was in jujitsu for two and a half years. Yeah. Wow. There's no way this kid is going from a green belt to a black belt, or from a yellow belt or whatever he was to a black belt by Christmas. Is it called a bribe? <laughs> yeah, they they cut the scene where his mom Abby is just slipping Benjamins to uh, hey, just the give me a fucking belt. I don't give a shit. Yeah, whatever, honor schmoner. Just give me a belt. Yeah, I want my fucking husband back. Okay, remember that mass <laughs> shooting that he might have got shot at or or lectured at or maybe he saw a horror movie. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Look, just give me the belt so I can show my kid that he's not going to get his dad back because he gets the black belt, and I can call him an idiot with a clean conscience. Yeah, my, <laughs> my question is, like, it, it, it seems like this is only happening during Christmas. Like, what happened to it during the rest of the year? Like, where they just like, oh, he's gone. Oh, Christmas is coming. Let's get him back. Like, what? You, you know what? He should have started working on that black belt thing back in, like, April or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. That way he could have conceivably, at least conceivably gotten there just by challenging the test every month or so. Mm. But no. Then we can have like a new... He's like going to cool jump scene. four ranks in two days? Yeah. No. Well, his his dad, his dad's a real a real prankster. He wants to... His, his, his dead slash missing dad is a real prankster. He just wants him to uh, show him he can do it, you know? I guess... <laughs> <laughs> they really, the movie re- missed a really good opportunity to like, you know, have oh, a did it? big, uh, did, did it miss big, like, you know, just the one, just few, the one, like a few months, like, uh, of him, like, just like training for his belt and it'd be like, you're the best. All right. They could not afford the rights. They would not. <laughs> yes. Listen, no. They spent the whole budget on Eric Roberts and Mike <laughs> Cove. They're not spending on, on anything else. Uh, <laughs> wax on, wax off. No. Nothing. Like I think you're adequate sued. at best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we get a marketing call about Santa gravy. Yeah. What? That was strange. Yeah, she just starts talking on her phone about Santa gravy. Oh, the fuck's sakes! Yeah. Yeah, the whole that whole thing about her, you know, being like a, a I I don't find her to be a uh, an absentee mom. No. No. But they the movie is trying to make her out to be that. Well, way. that that's yeah. what I meant earlier because it's doing that thing that a lot of, honestly a lot of uh even better movies than this do <laughs> is that be- the parent is working. Oh god, how horrible for that child. They must be the worst. <laughs> it's like kid, you want you want something at Christmas? Well, daddy or mom's got to work. Yeah. They're awful for that, aren't they? Yeah. Fucking, if you want to blame someone, blame capitalism, am I right? I'd like to do a reading, if I can, from uh, Ayn Rand's uh, book. The <laughs> nope, you can't. Nope, don't do it. Not allowed. <laughs> oh, okay. How about Rand Paul's book? 
No, you know what? You do all that when when you're the one leading the plot, you do it on your episode. And be sure to get I don't know, get get Brent on to be a guest that day. Yeah, he'll love that. See how that goes. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so not only is mom a super busy mom selling Santa gravy, which sounds kind of gross, gross and a little dirty. Yeah. Uh she then gets a call from her dead husband's cell phone. Right. Right. That's been like okay, okay, but like it's been he's been dead for he's been gone for a fucking year. It's like did like and they found like the phone in the booth. Has it been alive this whole time? But that's just and that's just it. Like they they she gets the call and then she goes to this diner. Hole, my favorite oh my God. scene in the whole. Movie. Oh my god, this fucking scene. So she goes to this diner and we find out at that night because I think it's like. It would be about the 22nd or 23rd of December at this point. Yeah. Uh, they're giving out uh, meals to the less fortunate. Yeah. And she finds out that her husband used to volunteer and do that. What a great guy. He never told me about that. Or maybe I never noticed because I was too darn busy working. Because she's such an evil, busy working woman. Right. Then she's like, she asks. The guy behind the counter. Oh my god! Are you Jay? And and he is such a fucking dick about this whole thing. Can I? Do I look can, like a can, letter? Can, can I? Can I just say? Please what he do, says Brandon. Because, I know you're dying too. Oh my Go god! Ahead. So he says, Jay. Do I look like? Do I look like Jay? Do I look like AJ? I don't think I look like a letter or a blue Jay. Do I look blue? And then he goes off and says. He starts talking about the the homeless ki- the home uh, the soup kitchen or whatever. And he says like, we feed people less fortunate here. We usually do this twice a month, but this month we're doing it four times because it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> just, there's so much information that and and it just aggressively yeah. says all this stuff to this lady who just simply asks, "Are you Jay?" Are you Jay? Which is a very often short. For James or Jason, or Jason, yeah, and he comes up just like, yeah. and it's so funny because like this isn't even exposition that we need. This is just nothing. And he goes on for a good while. Like he takes he takes a, a, a an offhanded joke and twirls it around the dance floor at least three times. And then he says, "Hey, I'm just kidding. Hey, yo, Jay, this chick wants to talk like, to Jay's you." Jay's my best friend. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, Jay's my best friend. It's like, what are you, Tommy Wiseau? <laughs> and that's it. Like, it's 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 such a weird thing. Like, usually with a joke like this, once you see the person is getting like kind of uncomfortable with the way you're handling it, you're just like, no, no, I'm I'm just playing. I'm just playing. You know, Jay's out back. You can go talk to him. You don't you don't go on about how you know. Do I look like a letter? Am I blue? No. So I was like, my note here was like, dude, calm down, Jay. So then this is where, you know, we find out that he, the he, Jay, found the phone in one of the booths of the diner. Do you think that the fake Jay, do you think the actor that played fake Jay uh, was just like, man, can I, can I just do one of my stand-up bits? <laughs> can I riff? <laughs> just let me riff yeah. for a while. I do this bit where I, somebody asks me if I'm Jay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hilarious. You have Let to hear do, the whole thing. No, be like, I'm try. I'm gonna try some new material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so after we get this kind of exposition about Jesse's dad, we then get a a full on lesson uh, about the colors of the belts that I think Jesse gives it to his I, babysitter slash nanny. Because uh, yeah. at one point the mom hires a nanny. Well, and there's a who whole she like, used to go to school with. There's a whole like uh, mix of live action and animated sequence when he just when he's describing the belts. Oh right, yeah, because he's saying like what they represent. Like the, the white is like the beginning, the birth, the journey towards knowledge, and then it's like um, was this all a yellow true? belt? Look it up. I don't. I'm not doing that kind of research for this fucking movie. Uh, we, cause we then cut back to a, a woman's, the woman's self-defense class that we talked about earlier, where we find out that, uh, Jesse's dad 
was apparently karate savvy and helped teach this woman self-defense class. And it's also it's it was clearly shot the same day as when the nanny went because she's wearing the same shirt. But also uh, there was like a nice goof that made me laugh. That I got Brennan to rewind. It was like they were putting uh, there's you could see in the background they're putting each other in a hold. And then when they cut back. It was like a like one click, like one like millisecond, and she was on the ground, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh my god, <laughs> it's perfect." Continuity can't afford it. Why? Well, I mean, why would you want it for this movie? Yeah, you don't need it. <laughs> I think the idea is is to, to bludgeon you into the Christmas spirit. Yes, that that's the miracle. Yeah, and, and so the there another reveal here because there's a knife that her husband had. And the other reveal here is that the, the psychic, <laughs> Professor took- Psychic, says that, oh, he didn't use that to defend himself at the theater. He used that to teach this self-defense class a knife to teach. Which means Bob, uh, Bob, that's Jesse's dad, steals office supplies. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Who's the real criminal in this oh, movie? Oh, right? Maybe yeah. he deserved it. <laughs> exactly. He deserved it. Summarily executed for the theft of office supplies. <laughs> Uh-oh. That was Eric, I'd be long gone. <laughs> that was that was Eric Roberts' big manifesto, actually. It was against those who steal office supplies. It was like, you know, a stapler is just an extension of life. And to steal that is to really uh, steal someone's essence away. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, okay. So he's teaching the self-defense classes with the knife. Uh, the knife was found... Um, in the alley at the mass shooting, I think that's where we're a at. year ago. If there a year happened, ago, oh my god, it's just crazy. Yes, and um, then we have uh, Martin Cove enters the picture. Sure. And so I, I my note here, this I think this is the part where I was actually the the cheese was sliding off the cracker for me because I have my note here. Martin Cove, Eric Roberts, what? And they also they find out that the um the theater uh belonged to Martin Cove, his character, and he was gifting it to his daughter, who I don't know who wrote this movie, but I feel that the choice of the daughter's name was rather insensitive. Uh, Very. Oh, oh, do you Very mean because the daughter's name is Aurora? As in the Aurora, Colorado shooting in real life? In a movie yeah. theater? In a movie in a theater. Movie theater. Yeah. With, a clown, I... with a clown and a guy with, like, fucking red hair. He had red hair, and, like, they were watching, like, the, what, Dark Knight Rises? Dark Knight, yeah, Dark yeah. Knight Rises. Well, in, yeah. and in this movie, Crazy. like, like, there, like there's a clown murderer, too. Like, so it's like, yeah, guys, this could not have been a coincidence. And, and this... And it happened like Dark Knight Rises. I mean, it was a good four or five years before this movie came out. So yes. there, it's yep. it's definitely um, a really tasteless reference to that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, so we find out that he was going to gift this uh, theater to his daughter the night that the the shooting happened. I think. I think so. And it, it's not super clear because the kid is clearly having an LSD dreams. <laughs> and then he immediately sits up in bed and explains this whole thing to his mom. And I wrote down, I am even more confused now. He has like four pillows too. Yeah, and he explains all this to his mom, saying that he has to he has to ramp up his uh efforts to get his black belt, and in doing so I will have to remain completely silent between to now till Christmas. And I said, first smart de- decision this movie has made. <laughs> I, then, he I, start, then he just starts doing sit-ups. <laughs> but he's like, Mom, I'm tough. And then he punches the air. Oh, yeah, he does this awkward thing. I don't know if you noticed, but I rewound it approximately four times. Yeah, you like laugh cries. I laugh, I laugh so hard because he's like, I'm tough. And then he does, and nobody can see this, but he does this little arm stretch. Like, I'm tough. Ugh. And he punches in the air. Yeah. And, but it's so awkward that i didn't know what he was doing <laughs> like i was like did he did he just he just wasn't natural did he just forget he was in a movie for a second <laughs> maybe i said in the thing like you know be brave you wait know, are like you a... say are you accusing this movie of having a script i don't know i don't know anymore Oof. <laughs> uh we then cut to drunk psychic professor oh yeah she's getting coming toasted. this fall on fox <laughs> but this winter i remember like uh we 
I didn't mention this earlier, but when she was like, they were both freaking out in the office, and when they first met, she lost her accent. Like her accent was gone. Oh yeah, it comes and goes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, she's fun. She's crazy. <laughs> She's wacky, a wacky professor. You know what fucked me up though, guys? She actually reminded me of a coworker. So the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, so she's there, she's drunk. Um, mom shows up to talk to her more about her her you know missing, presumed dead husband, and uh, drunk psychic professor. Has a barroom vision. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Yeah. And she has like she has a, a, a she has a vision. Real quick. Uh, nothing that's gonna explain anything to us, but she has a vision about the 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 husband and the shooting, and it's just flashes oh. and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. yeah. You know. Because there wasn't there like a he was there for a conference about guns. Okay, something like that. Just mention, he was there to do a speech on constitutional rights, but in a movie theater, which I was, uh, and on gun ownership, and I said, "Oh dear God, please don't go into this more movie." <laughs> and then the other thing, and then later she says, "Why did you go to that stupid horror movie? What did he do at the theater? It's never clear." Mm, and and she, we only find out that that she hates horror movies. And, and okay, so like she has that that thing where she says she hates horror movies. She's talking to the nanny about her her husband, Fran Drescher. Oh my God, would that that I oh, it would have made the movie at least you know at least five percent more watchable. Oh no, it looks like you lost your husband to karate. <laughs> It's a Hanukkah Christmas karate miracle. <laughs> uh, and this was the next thing that this got me really like, and, and I, I thought the edibles were kicking in super hard because the kid has a cell phone dream where he talks to Martin Cove. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I do not know what is going on. <sighs> And I don't think I'm supposed to. I don't think anybody's supposed to when they watch this movie. No, it doesn't make sense. He goes on about like it was it was your daughter, you gave her the theater, it was a miracle on her birthday. And I said, What are you talking about? I was close to having a panic attack just because I could not make heads or tails out of this. Yeah. I said, Is there something wrong with me? I paused it a couple times and I looked at Mariah, I was like do you understand any of this? I said no. And she looks well, like- it was actually at this point where I, my, I noted, this is like a karate stroke victim wrote a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, and then Abby, Abby at this point is also, uh, when she's at the bar, she's also a drunk acting, which her drunk acting was mm, chef's kiss. And she's becoming drinking buddies with a uh, psychic presser. Yes, who drinks a lot? Yeah, she got a problem. She's got well, she's got a she's got she's got to chase away all the visions she's had over the years, because this is where she gets into like uh, a whole thing. I think this is where she gets into the whole thing about how she not only saw like foresaw what was going to happen to you know Jesse's mom. But also what was going to happen to her and that she had to, you know, leave the love of her life because she had a vision that if she married him, he would die and all the other visions about people who would die. And, you know, so I'm guessing, you know, she became a law professor and is drinking away the visions. Yes. Well, I think she only starts drinking again because of Abby's visit, I think. So really, it's Abby's fault that she starts. <laughs> she, that she falls for off the her, wagon for her relapse. Yeah, she was she was perfectly fine, you know, teaching law uh, about Santa beating up surfers and greasers, and then and then you know Abby shows up and now she's you know she's off, she fell off the wagon, drinking again. Guys, it is mm-hmm. not April first. This is a real movie. Yeah, this yeah. happened. This all this stuff happened in the movie. <laughs> was this like a money laundering movie or something? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably. Good chance of it. Uh, 
and okay, so I, I'm I I'm really trying to figure out this. Let's this just... is the point where I was, I looked at Brendan and I'm like, fucking Nathan is gonna have a hard time <laughs> yeah. right in this spot because it got like I don't even, I think they gave up halfway through. Or... They get up. They they they're uh, we get. I have a note here. Is she Doctor Who cosplaying? Huh. Because prof- drunken professor psychic has like this full on like mid eighties Doctor Who look going oh, with the, the scarf and everything. The duster, yeah, yeah. And, and then she starts talking, and I got a little confused because when she started talking about the whole thing about the husbands and the visions, and the husband would die, I was like. Did she did she know Bob? Was she married to Bob? Did she leave Bob because Bob was going to die? And then she got married and then it, it, luckily there was just a, a brief moment of clarity where I managed to figure out no, she's talking about her own ex-boyfriend right. whom she left. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. Got it. <laughs> who the who she then runs into and At is very and is very much alive with his new uh uh Wife wife and he has a boy at home uh is that here because i have haunted gazebo i i i don't know that's no. oh no because mom was supposed to go to like a presentation uh about the the you know the the applesauce being the next jello and psychic professor lady shows up and it's like no you gotta come with me you gotta call me you gotta say something and there's a there's a plaque in, uh, in, in a gazebo that Bob helped build, and because of that she missed her meeting. But she found out that Bob was really generous and giving with his time. But she would have known that. Okay, and and then there's this. All right, so then there's this other discussion where she's talking about fairy tales, and we find out that she's creeped out by Grimm's fairy tales, and she asks, "Who comes up with these things?" And I was like, "The Brothers Grimm." It's, it's in the title. Yep. Is that weird? Like they, she goes into the car and it's like CCV, like it's like it looks like security cam footage, and like they get into the car and she's like creepy, like just going on. I think it was about the horror movies. Is that what it was? The fa- no, the fairy tales. The fairy she tales, was right? Out by fairy tales. Yeah. And then Jesse's going for his red belt, which again would the kid would not be ranking up this quickly. Mm. It's it's uh it's it's Christmas, man. But they need to, they need, he needs to rank up this quickly, not only to get his dad back, but also so he can have karate belt garland around the tree. Oh shit! Because they, they their whole tree is done up, and the garland is the different belts that he has gotten in karate. That was the best reveal in this whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, imagine if his, but because he did that, like his dad did come back, but came back as a Christmas tree. Oh my God. <laughs> He's like, I don't know if you've ever seen the episode of Mrs. Brown's Boys where they she gets a talking Christmas tree. And he's wishing wishing people a Merry Christmas, just randomly yelling stuff. I was like, that'd be great if that was the case. <laughs> Um, does it Abby at this point paint the birdhouse and she get and then the hilarious and the kids like you're looks like an idiot painted it. Well, basically, because well, I mean, Jesse comes down to look at it, and he doesn't talk. Remember, because he's not talking, but he gives yeah. her this look that's like, "Oh, you scamp, you tried." <laughs> and <then laughs> an just, attempt was made, is what that face says. Yeah, and then hugs her and walks away. And I said, "This kid is going to kill someone." Yeah. This is the next mass shooter. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> well, keep up the tradition of dark jokes on Christmas episodes. Oh, right. <laughs> what was that one that you made during uh, Shut I'll Be Home up! for Christmas? <laughs> Refer to some sort of event. Knock it that off. It never did happened. It didn't happen. Oh. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm joking. Uh, I wanted oh. to. Oh, okay, great. okay, okay. Perfect. Anyhow. Anyhow. All right, calm down there over there, Kanye. <laughs> Uh, we then we then cut to uh, Abby's boss being upset that she missed that meeting, and it was this this is when I first realized that uh, Abby's boss looks like um, Ben Foster's less talented cousin. <laughs> ben Foster, there's a name I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, he hasn't done a lot in a while. That's too bad. He's a good actor. Agreed. Yeah, I hate. 
I had to find out if something terrible happened, then we just never just flew under the radar. Oh no. my god! Or it's like, or he dies like in a couple days. Oh, please don't die! Stop it! Here. No! What is wrong with you? <laughs> no, we've done that a lot though, Nathan. Meatloaf, the Queen. Who else? Aaron. We were talking about Aaron Carter, and then he died. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were talking about you. We were talking about Aaron Carter. No, it was just. And oh, that doesn't count. No, That's I know. Just, he came but up very and... weird that we randomly brought up Aaron Carter for no reason at all. A few hours later, he died. <laughs> I never, I've never just been like, hey, what about Aaron Carter? And then later that evening, Aaron Carter, dead at 29. What? He was, like 30 <laughs> he was 29? He wasn't 29. He was like, in his oh, whatever. Who cares? You're, you're saying because you went to his concert. He went to an Aaron Carter concert. Okay, can we go back Anyways, to the movie? Sorry. He went to an Aaron Carter concert? No, I was we're a child. about this for the next two hours. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he played, yes, yes, he played basketball on the stage. Can we get back to the movie? <laughs> and now he's dead. Didn't we cover so. that Aaron Carter movie? You didn't mention that you went to a, one of his concerts? We didn't talk about an Aaron Carter movie. I thought we, I thought we did an Aaron Carter movie. <sighs> no. Okay, we gotta go, let's go back to the cats getting crazy. Killing me here. I'm pretty positive we did. We didn't. Supercross, we, did. we never talked about it. Not Supercross. No. There was another movie that he did, wasn't there? Fuck, <laughs> I'm fuck looking you, at his No, Brandon. no, I'm looking at his filmography. We have not seen any of his movies. I'm looking at I'm staring at it right now. You keep staring at it right now. <sighs> Pop star. That's not the same one. <laughs> didn't we do that one? No. No, we did not. When she finds out her new friend is is a is a pop star. You no, we have never talked Mandela about that movie. Effect. I have talked to somebody extensively about this movie. You and may I've have seen this movie. I have Maybe never Maybe you did even... it with uh Steve like another podcast. Anyhow, so where do we leave off? Um Yeah, the the, the mom oh yeah, Ben Foster's cousin. And uh then I have this note, what the hell is she on about? Frosty? What? Oh, and she's it, doing yeah, another she's thing where she's doing the, the law class thing. The where teacher's she's doing about, another Christmas. Yeah. Oh yeah, example. to one student. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's one student in the class, and I thought the joke was going to be like, I thought there was going to be a joke like, oh, I'm, I'm that interesting, or oh, I guess everybody uh, decided to drop out. But there's no joke. It's just they. I guess the extras didn't show up at the last second, and the filmmakers hoped no one would think it was weird. Maybe just don't well, cut to the people in the crowd. Like, just don't cut to the to the to the one person in the class. Well, she does make the joke about how um, uh, about the the one girl who stuck around to the end, and she's gonna get extra credit for it. I feel like they wrote that because the extras didn't show up. More than likely, yes. <laughs> oh my god, have we get like we haven't got to the point where. Uh, the kind of racist Zoom class? Yes! That's, that's, oh my god, it's, it's so No, that's later, up. that's later. Oh. That's, not, that's not yet. That's what I have next after the hell, is, what the hell is she on about? Frosty? And then we cut, the, you do cut to her, she's supposed to be doing like a Christmas Eve Zoom class with like uh, folks from India. Oh my god, and they're just, it's just literally just footage of like them playing cricket. It's blurry footage of like people running around and then you hear i'm not going to do it but you hear like a, a <laughs> generic foreign language being spoken over the i speaker. think it's just gibberish it it i'm certain that it is we don't have too much time to to fret and clutch pearls about this quasi racist zoom class because we get another dream sequence slash vision oh, can i just say though how hard would it have been to just get a bunch of people on a zoom call and just cut to that rather than cutting to this blurry yeah, it's footage. The thing that Zoom calls, so Zoom classes weren't a thing at the time. It was before the pandemic. Right. Oh, yeah. Zoom didn't exist in 2019. Oh, I'm saying it existed, but it wasn't as common. No, no. one would have thought to do it. Okay, but they could have cut to like a Skype. I, I don't know. Unfriended came out before the pandemic. I they think it was done just it. so funny. The fact that it was so funny is not obviously it was just because it was so fucking ridiculous. Like they like what did what were they thinking? <laughs> like, sorry, but not net, not yet. Sorry, not but like, yet. what were the people thinking when they did that? Still like, too close. That. Sorry, cut it, <laughs> cut it, future Brendan. <laughs> I'll say that at the end. <laughs> okay, and then again, we're treated to the concept that that I, I don't know. Bob's alive. You know what? Let's just drink. Let's drink. <laughs> 
because then she's gonna get she's gonna get drunk again with with Professor Psychic Lady. And she says, "Yeah." And this, I think, this is where she runs into her former fiance at the bar, right? Yes. Because this, this is the moment where, because the whole time she's thought that Bob is still alive, but when she sees her fiance, she's like, "Oh, maybe it was my fiance that I was seeing that was still alive. Bob could be dead. My bad." <laughs> right. Sorry. And she has sorry, this not whole. Sorry this whole protracted conversation with Bob and his, not Bob, but her uh, Mark. Is that his name? Uh, Mark and uh, his, his current wife. And he's like really uncomfortably off put by all of this. And the wife's like, Oh, that's nice. How are you? We should get together sometime. <laughs> not, not reading the responses at all from her husband. He's like, you told me I was going to die in a vision and we had to break up. That this I'm not ready to I just, have moved on. <laughs> I'm not I'm not ready to just casually chat with you again. <laughs> and uh, again the wife is just like that's so nice. You're I've heard so much about you. <laughs> so they they kind of that that whole thing is awkwardly done and the, the the psychic lady is is really in a tizzy now because she might think that oh Bob actually is dead because my former fiance is still alive um and uh i <laughs> this is she thought she heard bob's voice oh. out in the bar yeah. so what do you instinctively do i'm gonna head to the can that's far away <laughs> from the bar and go in there behind the door that would have muffled the sound preventing me from hearing his voice as this, clearly as i did out in the bar and this is the best actor in the whole movie oh <laughs> and yeah it's not bob <laughs> <laughs> the guy that's a what? What does he say? Well, it looked like Bob. I don't know. How is no, that? You're thinking about you're thinking about Jay. No, do I look like a Bob? No, no, like no. The guy. Burgers? No, the <laughs> what? No, the guy that she passes by <laughs> on the way to the bathroom. That's just like, oh, sorry. That that is the best actor in the movie. Okay. I mean, not, not Martin line Cove reading, or Eric Roberts. Solid line reading. Oh, I didn't say. He was in the, even the movie. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> say. I didn't say the best actor that was in this movie. Sorry, the best actor in this movie. The best performance. Oh, okay. like on a set. All right. <laughs> well, he was in. His, right. uh, Eric Roberts was on a set. He was on the. Yeah, but he wasn't involved in. Like he was. He was there. in his kitchen. He was on. It was on his kitchen set. Yeah. He dressed it up for the movie. All right, so we're. So this is like the final scene here. Yeah, we're rounding the belt. We're r- rounding the corner because we're going to the belt test. Yes, but you could J- do it at home. Uh, apparently, yeah. You know, I would I would buy that if this movie was made in 2021. Right. Where, like you could you can virtually test for your black belt, but I mean it's 2019. The world was still fine ish, <laughs> and you, uh, you would you had could... to have test in person. But if you cut to uh, a, a Zoom call of the instructor watching him do the bell test, it would probably be like just a bunch of people running in a field or something. Mm. Yeah, and then the, what's how does he pass his black belt test? Oh, you got to break this board. That simple. And then immediately his father casually walks through the door. Yeah, good you thing it's it. not a, like not like locked. Yeah. And it's... I immediately wrote, "What the fuck?" He wrote, he walks in and says, "You're a black belt, Jesse. You did it. You did it. You brought me back to life." It's like Neil Breen yeah. reading credits. That's it. No explanation to where Bob's been for the last year. And so she's like, "It's a Christmas miracle." That's it. And a missed opportunity for her to say the title of the fucking movie. It's a karate Christmas miracle. And then Mariah gives me fucking rib injuries. Yeah, Yeah, the movie just ends. He breaks the board and the dad dad walks in in the most casual way. No one is like, holy fuck, a ghost. And... Where was he for a year? Or, like, where was or he? Or somebody who was just released by his captors. Yeah, like, was he just waiting outside for his cue? Which, by the way, the way they filmed it, it looked a lot like he was standing there waiting. <laughs> That's just how it ends. There's no explanation. There's no payoff. What did Eric Roberts and Martin Cove have to do with it? Nothing. Not not at all. This None of that's paid fuck. off. a clusterfuck. A clusterfuck. We don't find out... 
that, you know, uh, Eric Roberts was eventually brought to justice because of the hard work of psychic pr- professor lady. We don't find out that Martin Cove finds closure about his daughter being shot in a theater that he just gave to her because of the work of Jesse, his mom and psychic professor lady. None of that. Here's the thing. I don't even know if either of them are real. (laughs) Like that's how much the movie explains. Yeah. She did get shot though. What? She did get shot though. She was in the hospital. Sure. But this hospital yeah. didn't have carpet. So like how do you? So, yeah. So how could it even be real then? <laughs> Get out of here. We are done. <laughs> done with this. Get. Oh, I should probably <sighs> empty that. I'm getting paper all over the place now. <laughs> uh, so are, we're gonna go around the horn. Uh, uh, we're gonna start with our guest, uh, Mariah. Is this movie? Is it worth a watch? A drunk watch with friends. Are you going to attempt head trauma to forget it or avoid it like the plague? Uh, attempt head trauma. Okay. Yeah. Definitely, because I would not want to watch this drunk because that would scare me and I would have to go to the hospital because I think I was having a stroke. So, yeah, no, no that's a, like attempt head trauma for me for sure. Uh, I, will, I will say that I was pretty toasted and uh, watching this movie. I, yeah, you're fucked up. I was like, "What's wrong?" <laughs> I had a couple. I had a couple pre-drinks, and then I had a couple during drinks, and uh, I, I had a good. I had a good time. So I, I gotta say, it's a trunk watch in that case because I was also getting a kick out of uh, every every <laughs> awkward dialogue delivery. Just just tickled me. Uh, so I, I'm gonna say, drunk watch with friends. Okay. Okay. Well, personally, myself, I'm. If I never see it again, it'll be too soon. Um, but I, I'm not going to go full throttle. I think I'm going to be more aligned with Mariah where I'll attempt head trauma to forget it. Yeah. Um, it's it's not so egregious, but it's you will you can derive some unintentional laughs out of it. But again, you bet I can. But still, it's not it's, like, yeah, it's just like, you know, it's not good. We like to watch Neil Breen movies because it's so bad. It's good. The Room, so bad. It's good. Birdemic, so bad. It's good. This is just fucking bad. This has made me mad. Like, it just like it, it uh, oh, insulted my intelligence. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'll watch a Breen over this any day of the week and twice on Sunday. But. Uh, just, just be, and, and if I hadn't have been drinking watching this, maybe that wouldn't be my recommendation. But because I was already drinking and I, I was enjoying myself to some degree, I have to just be accurate. I have to call it fair and balanced, like Fox News, and say drunk watch with friends. Mm. Okay, and that's fine. I'm gonna make you watch it sober. Wait, you did watch it sober a few years. ago. I watched it sober, and I also I, th- I remember also in, uh, sending a lot of clips to friends while I was watching yeah, it. Yeah, you also so. like share. I'm pretty sure you shared the ending with me and Monica. I did because the casual yeah. way he walks in is magical. Um, yeah, okay. it was a it was a magical day. It was a magical day. Magical we need to watch day. another Breen movie sometime soon. Oh my god, <sighs> February's coming up. So okay, so there you go. We've we've got we've got two head traumas. And a drunk watch with friends. Sounds like a good time. Sounds like a really great time, actually. <laughs> but, uh, guys, uh, we got to take a really quick break. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial, because like I always say, things have dials. We'll be right back. What were they thinking? Four Pillar Sports, a podcast for sports fans. Made by sports fans. Join Chris and Randy every week as they dive deep into football, basketball, baseball, and professional wrestling. Catch for Pillar Sports on all major platforms. And remember, keep on talking sports. The great visionary leader of India, Mahatma Gandhi, said, It is health that is real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. Listen to the Healthy Grocer radio show on your favorite podcast platform. We know that health is our greatest wealth, and we will be discussing all aspects of natural healing. 
Explore everything from supplements, superfoods, and healthy lifestyle choices to help conquer stress and boost productivity. Top industry experts and natural health professionals join us for a deep dive into our healing journey. You can find the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on demand every day wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And remember, health is your greatest wealth. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. NPR bot, please initiate NPR protocol. Have a karate Christmas, have a karate Christmas, have a karate Christmas, and fuck you. Oh, I, I thought I thought he was going to say a jujitsu New Year, but I guess I was wrong. He's got an attitude, what can I say? It's, it's, um, I, maybe he could be visited by uh, three ghost robots. <laughs> three Miloshes. Well, no, I mean, he would be, Milos would be like the Jacob Marley in that oh, situation. okay, okay, okay. But I digress. Um, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, the time of the podcast where we we like to wax a bit poetical, um, but not not in a um, a rhyming couplet or even a prose kind of way. Uh, no, it's time now for the low haiku. And, and Brendan, uh, just in case uh, this episode is. Um, uh, uh, the coal in somebody's stocking for the first time, and they've uh, they've they've listened uh, to us uh, around Christmas to to bring up their spirits. Mm. Explain to them exactly what the low haiku is all about. Well, the low haiku consists of seventeen syllables. Um, you would argue maybe perfect syllables, uh, and these uh, these syllables are used to break down the film that we just discussed. For considerably more than seventeen syllables. Mm. Oh, yes, that's considerably. Yeah, as much as, um, as as best as we could. And 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 as is our tradition, uh, we will defer to our our host, uh, our sorry, not our host, but rather our guest, mm-hmm. to lead us off. One two, is this on? Yo, Jimmy, hit me with that triple H. I just want to get ready. Okay. <laughs> sort of racist prof. Oh, I'm having a vision. Kevin McLeod. Okay, very good. Very good. And and Brendan, do you have uh do you have a nice bit of poetry for us? Uh yes, I do. This represents my uh frustration while watching it at times. Mm mm. Karate Christmas. What the fuck is happening? I don't even know. Okay, very good, very good. All right. Um, m- m- mine uh, addresses a-, a quibble that I had with the movie that I do- I feel that we only kind of uh, uh, talked about m- momentarily and-, and didn't expand upon as much as I'd like to, but uh, it is as follows. <clears throat> Mixed up martial arts. Jiu-jitsu, not karate. It's Christmas, I guess. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, uh, NPR bot, if you could please initiate exit protocol. Thank you. Bleep, blorp, whatever. You know what? That I'll take it. It's a, it's a, it's a karate Christmas miracle. He didn't swear. Shit, yeah. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> NPR bot. When uh, did you start doing like the NPR bot? <laughs> That's I don't know. Why do go? Oh. Don't break the fourth wall there, Mariah. Jeez. <laughs> Just add the Milos built him for us Aww. so that it didn't hurt every yeah. time he went into and came out of NPR mode. Oh. But as of late, uh, for the last couple of months... Uh, something's wrong with his programming 
and he's referencing the movies we talked about and picking the most sweary lines in the movies to reference. So uh, yes. now you're caught up, Mariah. There That's what's go. going on with NPR. Pod. All right, let's thanks do- for listening to the show. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, we're out of NPR mode, and, uh, but, I mean, we've kind of talked about this, but, I mean, you know what you might be thinking? You know what, these guys might be filthy, disgusting liars, uh, and we don't want you to think that we're filthy, disgusting liars, so much so that we have a, a, a little thing that that we actually, you know, maybe we should put on a t-shirt, maybe, I don't know, but what's that, that, that saying that I think that we should maybe, like, put on a t-shirt or baseball caps and maybe business cards? Well, that saying is... Don't take a word for us! Yeah, that's right. Don't take our word for it. Although you kind of might, because there's nothing on the tomatoes. Sorry. But we... uh, We... Strive... To deliver... To our audience... So we will be braving IMDb <sighs> and Letterbox uh, to bring you the reviews that the audience has because there's not a critic in the world who would have reviewed this thing. Now, uh, Brendan, you're covering Letterbox, is that correct? Do they have a if you liked this section on Letterbox? Because if they don't, Brandon, if they don't have a section where if you might like that, if you like this, you might like, you know, these things. Over on IMDb, they have a little section more like this. And the first thing in the more like this category is a wrestling Christmas miracle. Um, also, apparently more like this, which I think is a bold faced lie, is the Karate Kid trilogy and the Karate Kid cartoon well the, which is a thing the only reason is because martin cove i i sure i guess um or the movie where hope grows holiday in handcuffs spy mate one that we've covered on the show before saving christmas the three dog Kateers, karate dog starring chevy chase and jamie Priestley. Uh, and also, finally, Rice Girl with Joe Estevez and Pat Morita. And I'm sure it's not thoroughly racist at all. Uh, no, certainly not a movie called Rice Girl star- mm-hmm. co-starring Pat Morita. How could that be racist? Mm. Well, Nathan, I got to tell you what the people on uh, the box of letters are saying. Okay. This review comes from Uncle Chet, who gives it five stars. The very last pre-COVID movie masterpiece. I give this film five bags of popcorn and two bags of soda. What? what, Bags of soda? Yeah, the, you know, it's like the, the, what they put the syrup in. Oh, okay. I was going to say, he must be Canadian, you know, how we have bags of milk. Okay, well, my first one is is a positive one as well. Um, One of the few that I found. And it's from uh, Nathan Boyq, and he wrote it in December of 2021, and writes, "Totally insane. If you enjoyed the room, you may get a kick out of it. The clown mass shooting was truly unexpected twist. Not a well-made movie, but the production quality isn't so bad that it is difficult to watch." This is an altogether different variety of bad Christmas movie than the usual romantic fare. Eight out of ten, and two out of two found people found this helpful. This movie is a stunning, moving, uh, and moving drama, comedy, and mysterious one of this f- the, of this film is. For everyone struggling with the death of a family member or a friend in a mass shooting, can take a small amount of faith of the 12 karate tasks that bring their loved one back from the dead. I won't spoil the end, but let's just say there is a karate Christmas miracle. Amazon Prime again delivers with a brilliant addition to the platform. I'm sure Netflix and other platforms will be turning out the cash for a chance to stream this one. A lot of crying at the end, and I had to leave this review, so I had... Uh, so, that, so that I can uh, look back at the first uh, time this movie broke my heart. Dot, 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 in brackets, rest in peace, RIP mass shooting the victims. Wow. That's, wow. 
All right, my next one comes from Darth Slug, gives it four and a half stars. The biggest miracle is that this movie was ever made and has Eric Roberts and Martin Cove in it. And this is a reveal, I hope, a real one. But I guess that Ken Del Vecchio bought the actors by giving them prizes at his movie festival. Like a sandwich that didn't even have a bite of it? Uh, I don't know. I guess that's the director. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, my next one comes from an unpronounceable string of letters. VHW, VJBCFY. And they write, horrendous acting. Looks like it was filmed by a 10-year-old on an iPhone 5. Storyline makes absolutely no sense, and there's so much random stuff going on all at once. Special effects are horrible. There were special effects. Dumb ending. Audio is weird at some points. Very stupid. If you want to watch a horrible Christmas movie, you found it. One out of ten. So this one is from CRQMSH. It was written in July, on July 7th, 2021. It says, uh, the title is called Better Than Endgame. It says, for having a $1.5 million budget. What? This movie is trash. Don't waste. But they spelled waste like uh, your waste. Your time. One out of ten. No, that's right. Oh, oh, you like your body part. Yeah. Yeah. Did, wait, hold on. It said it's better than Endgame, yeah. but it w- gave it a one star and tried to tell me it's a $1.5 no, it million budget. No, it is. It literally, like, that's not the first like thing I've seen here that's a $1.5 million budget. Okay, so to answer your question earlier, yes, it is a money laundering scheme. A karate. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a very the producers type situation. Yeah. Okay, well, I will um, I will, I will, will finish it off. I'll finish off my reviews here with... Uh, a one from uh, Screen Man, who gives it four stars, and this is a pretty this is pretty apt. Uh, he simply says, "If Michael Scott directed a Christmas movie." <laughs> uh, my last one comes from a truly inspired uh, user ID. Trump is a hump. Wow! Okay. And they simply titled the uh, the review, "Oh my," and they write. If the budget for this was any more than the cost of SD cards for the terrible quality camcorders this was shot on, they wasted every penny of it. What a steaming turd. One out of ten. Was that review written by George Takei? (laughs) I certainly hope it was. I mean, (laughs) Trump is a hump and leads with, oh my... I just want to mention that Mariah just confirmed on IMDb. It does list its budget at $1.5 million. So back to what I said about the money laundering. Yeah. (laughs) So we've waxed poetical, and we've told you what the the audience says, because the critics had nothing to say about this fucking movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now we're going to stop talking about the, 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 the bad stuff. And we're going to talk about the stuff that we like, the stuff that we're having fun watching and checking out. It's the dance sensation that's sweet of the nation. That's right. It's time for What You Watching, Bud. What You Watching, Bud. I don't know what you're watching, Bud. I'll tell you so. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so, Mariah, since you're our guest, what you watching, Bud? All right, bud. So what I'm watching is you probably think that I'm watching RuPaul's Drag Race, but no, I'm not. Probably. Because I didn't have anything on. RuPaul's so. Drag Race Canada. Yep. Ru- uh, was it Paul Rudd's Drag Race? Um, <laughs> I'm actually I'd watching watch uh, Handmaid's Tale. I've watched, I'm on season two right now. And uh, yeah, it's an intense show, mm. but um, I'm on season two, episode seven. It's getting crazy and I want to binge the whole thing. Mm. And that's what I'm watching. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, well, Brendan, uh, the the question is to you. Uh, what you watching, bud? Um, well, uh, Nathan, I ju- I I uh, I took a little trip to the cinema recently. Ooh, um, yeah, to the the Cineplex. Ooh, fancy la di da. And <laughs> I saw a new film that just came out called The Menu. Um, this I want to see that. It's real good. Uh, it's about a bunch of uh, people who get invited to this very exclusive restaurant run by a chef 
played by Ray Fiennes, who, uh, I mean, come on, you you know right away that he's there's something else going on He's there. the bad guy, you're the bad guy, you're Ray Fiennes, you're the bad guy. <laughs> um, it also has uh, Anya, the great Anya Taylor-Joy, has Nicholas Holt playing an absolute horrible person. <laughs> he's just the shittiest you'll see. Um, and I will just say, uh, not to uh, make a pun or anything, but the movie is... Uh, best served without knowing too many details beforehand. So I will, uh, I will remain mum on that situation. Okay. I've got my suspicions, but <laughs> what about, uh, what you, bud, what you watching? Uh, well me, what am I watching? Um, I've kind of, uh, I'm checking out something now that I, I, I will say I've slept on, but I haven't also felt any sort of real desire to like, actually actively seek out and watch it howard but, the duck oh my god i've seen that so many times that's not going to fall into that category <laughs> um no my uh my oldest has recently gotten into the show supernatural okay. with uh you know uh jared padalaki and and uh, jensen ackles mm. fun names to say they are and uh she approached me like i'd never heard of this show <laughs> I'd never watched, really watched the show at all, really, but knew it was good, and, and a lot of folks had recommended it to me before, uh, thing, figuring I would enjoy it just because of the content, and so I figure I'd give her the win and let her feel like she, you know, kind of switched me on to something new and different, and uh, so we started watching it, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually having a pretty good time watching the so far the first season of of supernatural and if it you know if it keeps up it's 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 like x files meets psych it would be the best way for me to describe it if anybody who's never seen it which i think is kind of ridiculous at this time but i mean mm. again i hadn't seen it so but again having a good time with it supernatural it's on prime like i think every episode's there there's so, a lot yeah like 15 seasons at least if you've slept on it yeah Pull the trigger. It, you're going to have a good time uh, for the first, as my daughter said to me, for the first five or so, you're going to have a real good time, and then you're going to have to slog through seasons six and seven before it starts getting good again. I've heard that, too. I've heard there's ebbs and flows once you start getting uh, a little further into it. Well, uh, not to be outdone by her dad, who's often you know, spouting mindless trivial things about a show that he's trying to get somebody interested in she actually said to me you know season five was supposed to be the last season but then people liked it so much that they figured they just keep making more and that's why season six and season seven aren't very good but if you can get through them <laughs> you're really gonna have a good time after that because it does get a lot better afterwards mm. so thank you cheyenne <laughs> there you go so supernatural yeah well, what about uh, uh, what about uh, what about Montrose? Does he have a few things he'd like to say? I'm sure he would. If you just give me one moment, I will get him. Okay. Hello, it's good friend Montrose Monkington the Third here, and I I would just like to take this time to not only wish all of you, uh, you know, a happy Christmas. Uh, and, and a very joyous new year, but also uh, just to um, uh, invite you uh, to my YouTube channel, Montrose Monkington TV, um, at the, the with the uh, the YouTube handle at Montrose the Third. It's a very new thing with them, but still, uh, it may sound familiar. That's number three RD, by the way. Uh, and then you can be friends with me on the Facebook group, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends. And then finally, uh, you can uh, tweet it to me on your Twitter devices uh, with the, the the tag at Montrose the Third. That's the number three RD. Thank you. More later. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Montrose. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas to you. So that's it, man. Yeah, we've we've uh, got a happy Christmas from Montrose. We've talked about the things that we're watching. We've did the reviews, and I just want to say thanks again to Mariah for uh, for coming out uh, for another Christmas. And I th I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Wiesenthal Institute isn't going to be after us for this episode. Uh, but, yeah, uh, 
you know what, Brendan, you've got this uh, down to a science. Tell the folks where they can find us and get our merch and all that sort of stuff. Well, if you want to find us, our home base, as far as uh, podcast episodes are concerned, is at Age of Radio. Big time! You can go to ageofradio.org slash what were they thinking. Uh, you can find us on all the podcast apps, of course. Just search for us and we're there. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Uh, you can find us on Redbubble and Public and Patreon.com slash WWTT Podcast. Um, but I guess at this point, I, I, I mean, God, uh, questions. I have, I have questions. Well, you know what? I will do my absolute level best to answer them, but I have crumpled up my notes. So <laughs> proceed. Well, in, in, in a movie, maybe in a thing that was put on some sort of video medium. Okay. I'll buy it. I'll take that. Um, where you have Eric Roberts Mm -hmm. and Martin Cove. Right. And you just kind of put them in scenes. Mm -hmm. You don't really give them a reason for being there, so to speak. That makes Mm -hmm. sense. No, not really. No. Um, in a a movie that, uh, (laughs) and in a movie where they're definitely doing karate and it's right in the title and that's what they're doing and it's karate. Jiu-jitsu. In a movie that, in, in in a kids a family Christmas movie, which starts off by <laughs> mentioning that there was a movie theater mass shooting and references a real mass shooting in Colorado, a quite like you know a well known one. Hmm. Seems 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 what you'd like the thing you do in a Christmas movie for kids, yeah, for especially mm-hmm. um, it's for the kids. And in a movie that inexplicably cost one point five million dollars, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just I got I got I got a question on my mind, man. Does does it involve the Russian mafia and money laundering? I mean, yeah, but I also want to okay. know uh, what were they thinking? Everybody was kung fu. They fought with expert timing. There were funky China men from funky Chinatown. They were chopping them up. They were chopping them down. It's an ancient Chinese art, and everybody knew their part. From a fainting to a slip, and a kicking from the hip, everybody was gone. Oh. 